Good evening. What's going on there, folks? Uh, it is the Earthmaster back here on this Thursday night, February 23rd, 2023. It's about uh, 9.57 p.m. here along the West Coast. And uh, goodness, we got some heavy-duty rain coming down out here around the Chico, California area. The latest earthquake shows a 4.0 earthquake into the region of the Turkey area. All right, let's go ahead and see what's going on here across the area. Uh, let's take a look at radar real quick. I want to show you guys what's going on out here around the northern California area. Got a heavy band of rain coming into the Calusa, Glen County, Butte County area, specifically up here around the Chico area where I live. Uh, got some heavy-duty rain as well. This is all definitely liquid precipitation. Looking at the predicted snowfall area, uh, still show some colder air through the western areas of the foothills uh, on the coast range and uh, of course up here into the uh, paradise area redding still looks like it's occurring uh rainfall is still occurring up there in the redding area uh, according to the radar scope here and that is due to a sufficient south wind being kicked up here from the frontal system the low pressure system that's kicking off here off the northern california coastline we'll check that here check that out here in just a second all right far as earthquake activity goes here northern cal i know you guys had some snowfall up there around the eureka area and crescent city goodness i've seen some uh, snowfall earlier uh during the day today up there around the uh, crescent city area pretty impressive latest earthquake shows a 2.3 this one from last night Nothing further to report here throughout the last 24 hours or so. In fact, general earthquake activity out here along the West Coast has been very minimal. We got one earthquake here within the last hour, 1.5. Uh, just outside the San Luis Obispo area near the Baywood Los uh, Osos. Is that right? Hopefully I pronounced that correctly. Very small microquake at 10 kilometers deep. Southern California, very uh, minimal in terms of earthquake activity for now. And it's kind of been that way for a little bit. Um, up into the Pacific Northwest, outside of Kent, Washington area. Getting in on a little bit of earthquake activity early this morning. couple ones and twos. This is all south of Seattle and occurring somewhat deep there. At about 20 kilometers deep. Uh, underneath, um, well, I think this has to do with the Cascadia subduction zone. It's not really associated with any specific surface fractures up here as listed up here on the map, uh, but it is somewhat deep there for that region. Uh, into the Idaho area, got a little bit of swarming kicking off here earlier this evening, a 2.8, 3.3, and a 1.9 near Freedom. I like that word, Freedom, Idaho. Uh, that is up against the mountain ranges here. Um, looks like around the Caribou Range. A couple different fault systems that do run through this area, not showing up here on the USGS map. Uh, Texas and the rest of the states relatively quiet. We got one oddball earthquake out here in the New Hampshire area. 2.1. What's going on? What's going on out there around the New Hampshire area? Looks like about 10 kilometers deep for that 2.1. All right, looking at the bigger picture here, where is most of our activity occurring? Looking at this USGS map, it's pretty obvious to pinpoint here uh, around the Middle America Trench. The northern area of the caribbean plate and along the south america region all seen uptick in earthquake activity here over the last 24 hours let's go ahead and check it out here 2.3 the latest though in this area around puerto rico prior to that we've seen some movement along the middle america trench a new earthquake there around bolivia this earthquake relatively deep into the peru chile trench here that blue circle there 214 kilometers deep a little bit of activity bouncing back and forth here between these two plates. Did see a 3.9 in the Mona Passage area. Uh, prior to that, a little bit of movement down into the or uh, around the Cuba area. Uh, but definitely a noticeable uptick in earthquake activity here across these uh, these plate boundaries here. Got a couple different plate systems here that all intertwine with each other, and that's where our focus is currently on uh, the potential for some larger scale movement. It's kind of pointing towards this area currently, and we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, one earthquake here outside of the Papua New Guinea area. We've got a 4.9 coming in to the area, 144 kilometers deep. 
Of course, we did see that uh, 6.3 coming in earlier uh, in the daytime there, 6.3 Indonesia. That came, believe it or not, that came right after my morning update. <laughs> Goodness. Um, but it has been kind of pinpointing uh, some cluster of earthquake activity within this region. Uh, let me show you guys here real quick around this area where that 6.3 struck. It's been building up pretty nicely here across the Maluka Sea, uh, Banda Sea region, and this area surrounding that 6.3 that struck uh, in the Indonesia area, 97 kilometers deep. Uh, I, I believe this is associated with the southern end of the Philippine Trench here. Uh, this area has definitely been rocking and rolling here around the Maluka Sea over the past couple weeks. Continue to watch that for some further movement. Across the area of the Java Trench, some uh, twos and threes kicking off there throughout the uh, early evening time period. And uh, movement across the, the Turkey area looks consistent with some fours and threes and some twos out there. Also further west of this area around the... Uh, uh, around the Mediterranean region, all showing uh, just a slight uptick in earthquake activity across there today. The Atlantic Ocean, fairly quiet. Uh, let me check out the Yellowstone overview before we get into weather activity. I'm, I'm going to be staying up all night watching this uh, activity today. Um, goodness, there is, well, let me see what we got here. So this activity occurring in southern Idaho has shown up pretty drastically uh, across the area of Yellowstone. I thought this was a Yellowstone swarm going on, but it's not. This is centered roughly around the Moose Creek, Idaho area. Those are going to be these earthquakes showing up here uh, into the southern Idaho area as a 3.3, a 2.8, and a 1.9 earlier uh, this evening time period. But definitely showing up fairly nicely. Uh, across the Yellowstone area. The uh, trimmer map here tonight. Let's go ahead and check this out. 93 epicenters of trimmer along the Cascadia subduction zone. Trimmer activity definitely defines increasing pressure and stress out there along the subduction level of the Cascadia. Right now, 93 epicenters mostly uh, positioned around the Vancouver Island ranges up here outside of Victoria. All right, uh, taking a look here at the weather once again along the West Coast. Uh, I know there's some blizzard warnings going on up down in, I should say up, down into the Southern California area. And that's kind of where we're going to start off first here, uh, looking at the uh, areas around Los Angeles and whatnot. There's some, there were some thunderstorms that were kicking up down here earlier today. Unfortunately, there's a lot of Ra uh, radar interruption here due to the uh, mountains here to the north of L the Los Angeles area. So we're not able to see some of the snow that's coming in here. Um, but there is definitely some, some good rainfall coming into the Southern California area. Let me show you guys here uh, real quick. Let me back out of here and we'll bring up the windy map here and just did not mean to do that. <laughs> Goodness. Um, by the way, there's our massive low pressure system. Mid-latitude mid cyclone is what these things are called. Let me show you guys here on the satellite uh, what it looks like. It's a, uh, a pretty impressive system here. It is scooting down straight out of the north here of the northwestern area. It's scooting down south. Bringing with it a lot of cold air and moisture off the Pacific, streaming into my area, obviously around Northern California. Southern California, there's, you know, the brunt of the system is yet to come. We did have some spin up systems here around Los Angeles uh, with some thunderstorms, but uh, I think the brunt of the system is coming in later today or uh, later tomorrow. Uh, rain accumulation amounts here are pretty impressive across Los Angeles area northward uh, into the mountains here. Very impressive rainfall rates roughly, uh, well, let's see what we got here around the area. It looks like maybe a couple inches, a few inches or so, six inches reported in some of these mountainous regions. This area is uh, prone to drought, so this is some significant reduction in the drought um, that's taking place out here along the West Coast. We definitely need it. So 
This is highly appreciated. Snowfall up there as well uh, into the mountains north of Los Angeles across the grapevine uh, into the Mammoth Lakes area. These guys are talking about an enormous amount of snowfall up there. And they've already had some earlier back in January, a bunch of snowfall. So this has been one heck of a winter, let me tell you. Uh, snowfall here. This is the HRR model again. And bring up the next 24 hours. And it looks as though, you know, we were expecting some some uh, snowfall out here in the Sacramento Valley. But we have a very strong south wind right now. Let me show you guys the wind. Wind map kicking up here. Out of the south, due to this low pressure system spinning off counterclockwise. Just looks like it's positioned just off the Eureka area, Northern California. So with this type of setup, this brings in wind flow from the... Pacific, which is relatively warm um, compared to this system coming in, uh, and that's funneling in some warmer air. Look at the temperatures up here around San Francisco, Sacramento, in the low 40s. Uh, up north around Chico, 39 degrees, 39 in Willows, 37 in Red Bluff, 37 in Redding. So, as long as this system comes in with funneling up this south wind, we are not going to see snowfall. Unfortunately, uh, that's a downfall to this system. Uh, yes, we got precipitation coming in and lots of snow, uh, probably above 1,000 uh, thousand feet or so. But for the valley areas, um, this is not a good benefit. The south wind is not a uh, beneficial uh, feature for some snowfall. Um, so looking at that snowfall, the new snowfall map, this is over the next 24 hours has really dropped off dramatically. Um, areas around Willows, maybe over an inch, we'll see. That's gonna be definitely early tomorrow morning. I'll be staying up for that. Here around Chico, we are less um, because the south wind tends to push towards the eastern side of the valley. Um, so more than likely, areas western side of the valley, that includes Maxwell northward, Orland, Corning, Red Bluff, should see uh, some snowfall early in the morning, Friday morning. But man, did it dramatically drop off. And that's due to the delta uh, breeze kicking in here from that low pressure system. It's, uh, goodness, <laughs> it's not a good deal uh, when it comes to uh, snowfall. Thunderstorm potential. Um, it's hard to say if we're going to see any thunderstorms out here tonight. Uh, there is some heavy duty rain, obviously. As uh, we're seeing here into Northern California currently. Let me back out of the radar. Um, I just added radar scope here to my uh, computer. This is an awesome program to use. Uh, I util utilize this on my, um, on my uh, storm chasing adventures and my cell phone adventures. But here on the computer, it's also very awesome. Um, so we got this enormous band of uh, some fairly heavy duty rain coming in to the Chico area currently. And uh, we'll, we'll expect some rainfalls probably a, around an inch or so uh, by the time this is all said and done. Uh, but far as snowfall, it's an iffy deal. It's going to happen after the uh, passage of this uh, heavy band of rain early uh, tomorrow morning probably between five and seven or so in the a.m. All right, space weather activity here, folks. And I'm going to jump off here. I've still got my barbecue. Whoa. Just looking at the weather right now. It's 36 degrees outside in my backyard. That's almost enough for snow. That dropped like literally four degrees since I uh, jumped on the stream here. Um, yeah, because I do have an outside weather station in the field here where I live. And it was 40 degrees when I jumped on the, the uh, update here. Now it's 36.7. So we are very close to snow. Uh, looking at the uh, space weather activity here, we're looking at in uh, potentially an M flare kicking up here as we speak. That is coming from our bad boy sunspot up here. Notice this uh, flaring kicking off, the brightness. There's a lot of features within the structure of the uh, sunspot. I think that harbors a good chance of at least seeing a very strong M-flare, if not an X-flare here over the next couple days. 
We'll continue to watch that as that rotates into view. Um, the, I'm going to go outside and see what's going on. I'm going to see if I can spot some snowflakes. Um, looking at the uh, sunspot or the uh, coronal hole here, we got actually a fairly nice coronal hole, earth facing. And this will be geo effective. Number 79 will enhance the three day here um, in a few days. It takes a little while for that high speed solar wind stream to flow in, uh, but it looks like that looks like that could enhance the conditions here for the uh, higher latitude folks. All right, I'm going to go outside, folks. I want to see what's going on. Um, kind of curious because it's uh, 36.2 uh, 36 degrees now. And we can get some large flakes in there at that temperature. Have a good night. We'll be uh, providing some updates out here, obviously. Um, off and on. I'm up for the uh, long duration. I've had a, a Red Bull or two. <laughs> Not even joking. So I'll be up at least probably till 2 or 3 in the morning to see what the uh, conditions, conditions are like. Uh, in terms of snowfall out here. Have a good night, folks. We'll catch you guys a little bit later. Uh, look for updates out here.